On this worksheet, we're gonna practice predicting the number of peaks in a carbon-13 NMR spectrum and also predicting the relative position or location of each peak, the chemical shift of each peak. Um, this process is exactly the same as predicting the number of peaks in a proton NMR. We're just looking for the number of different types of equivalent carbon atoms. Uh, finding a plane of symmetry is really helpful. Atoms that fall along the plane of symmetry are identical to each other or unique from the other types of carbon, so I'm going to call those A. The plane of symmetry that runs right here shows us that these two carbon atoms are identical to each other as well, so we'll label both of those B. And in terms of chemical shift, carbon A is closest to the oxygen, so that means that it is going to be furthest to the left and carbons B are gonna be further to the right. For our next molecule, here is our plane of symmetry. So this is one carbon. These two are identical to each other. These are identical to each other, and this one is different. And then in terms of shift, because carbon A is closest to the chlorine, it's gonna be furthest to the left. On the spectrum, D, which is the furthest away from the chlorine, will be to the right. Uh, B, uh, the, the, the progression of the peaks from left to right will go A, B, C, and D. So if I just kind of draw a spectrum, uh, A will be here, and then B, and then C, and then D. Uh, for this molecule, all of the carbons are unique. So there's four different types, four different peaks. In terms of chemical shift, this one is going to be the furthest to the left because it's closest to the bromine. A is going to be furthest to the right because it's further away from the bromine. B and D are going to be pretty similar in location because they are the same distance from the bromine. For our next molecule, we have uh, a lot of different types of carbon atoms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And in terms of chemical shift, C is definitely going to be the furthest to the left because it is... Um, close to both of the oxygen atoms. B is going to be the next furthest to the left. I'm not sure how to notate that. Next furthest to the left. It looks like the carbon atom that is furthest away from the oxygens would be G. And the worksheet does just ask us to identify the one that is furthest to the left and the one that's furthest to the right and not necessarily rank all of the rest of them in the molecule. And so we don't really need to try to figure out the position of the rest of those peaks. Looks like we have two more to go. So this molecule has a plane of symmetry right here, and that means that we have one, two, three different types of carbon atoms. And these, because they are part of the carbon, carbon double bond, they're gonna be the most deshielded, so they'll be on the left side, and A will be on the right side. And then our last molecule here, we have just one type of carbon atom, so it doesn't make sense to talk about left or right because there's only gonna be one peak.